in a nogi setting, you have to develop hand position in a way where you're a lot closer to the person and you gotta secure the upper body first. I like the underhook and wrist position. Right, so we're in the stance here. I may reach out with the backhand. That's kind of the important thing because I wanna protect my lead leg. I go here and then I go over and I snap my head down, opponent's head down to diagonal downwards. Okay, not just straight down, I can, but I wanna pull him to the side a little bit to thread this arm through, okay? Once I have this underhook, look, I secure this and I put my forehead on the side of his head, okay? This is very, very important. Now from here, look, I'm gonna go over and then catch the wrist. Now from here, it's a lot more secure and then there's a lot less distance. And also, my leg is protected, okay? There's no way that he could drop down and grab a leg here, okay? I could use my head to block his head, keep good position. And now from this position, I'm gonna go cross body osoto. Okay, so from here what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drive my head into him so the weight shifts to the outside leg. I'm going to connect my leg to leg. I'm going to wrap this leg here, okay? And now from here I'm going to drive my opponent by pushing off of this leg, pulling this leg. And now from here, I have a classic judo-esque nogi o sotogari. Obviously this thing doesn't work in a vacuum, right? Once I get this on the hook here in the wrist, right? I may not be able to just go across. And in that case, I may have to attack the inside leg, which him out of here. Pull down, and then go Soto. I can go Tayo here, right? But this arm is not gonna stay here forever. So you have to be ready. If he tries to bring the arm around and pummel back in, I may have to shoot underneath and then abandon this. So you kinda have to have other shots too, right? You can't just do judo. And then pummel this on the hook in as well, okay? It's not as good, I can control the head, look for that wrist, sometimes you may not be able to get it. So you may have to force a front headlock position there, who knows, right? But this is a nice one to be able to try. Uh, if you're kind of new, you can start off with on the hook. Generally speaking from here, okay, your opponent's not gonna keep this so loose, let's look around. Because if the arm's very loose, it's easy for me to do a throw back here, okay? So generally speaking, a good opponent is going to lock down for an overhook, okay? Which in turn, inadvertently, makes this a lot stickier. Okay, and now the battle is gonna happen here where I'm trying to create this space and Eugene is trying to create the same space by driving his head into the side of my head. So now, if I wanna go across body of Soto, you see the head is in the way? It's gonna be very, very difficult, okay? But if my head's here, it's a lot easier for me to drive and off balance him using my head because I have good shoulder control, okay? Also, a quick note when I'm circling here, if I have the over on the if Eugene clamps out on the shoulder, right, with an overhook, bang, I don't have a lot of control over my arm, okay? So he's winning this position, and then, you know, you guys all know this elbow lock here that can potentially happen. So you really wanna keep this arm elevated high with good head position, all right? So fighting in here and understanding when you're winning with the underhook versus the losing with the overhook, that takes a little bit of nuance too, okay? So get in there, play around with it, and like I said, if you're doing wrestling with somebody, they're kind of just hanging this arm here, okay? You're not gonna go for a lot of this stuff, it's too loose, okay? So you're just gonna shock it, go by, and now you've already taken the back, from there you can lift the Ashley, all these other stuff. It's gonna be available for you, okay? So give it a try, check out shintorhigashi.com, more noggy stuff coming. Thank you. Oh,